Good morning and welcome to the workshop. In part one of this series, we spent time in the bee yard learning how a mini nuke can help in our beekeeping journey. Today, we are back in the workshop ready to put one together. So sharpen your pencils and join me as we learn how to build a mini nuke in the beekeepers workshop. In the first video of the series, we introduced the mini nuke and then went to the bee yard to learn some basics of working with these tiny hives. There, we worked with a four chambered mini nuke, which is essentially a standard Langstroth hive body divided into four sections or chambers. A slightly modified bottom board and inner cover separates each chamber from its neighbor. In a half length frame, the mini frame completes the setup. We learned how a mini nuke can be used to raise queens, either from queen cells that we graft or letting the bees raise their own queen from scratch. We also saw how a mini nuke can be used to make splits, either from established colonies or from a package of bees. Now it is time to go back to the workshop and build a mini nuke. For the most part, the components of a mini nuke are the same as a standard Langstroth hive with only a few modifications. In fact, one of the advantages of this style of mini nuke is exactly this similarity. The lessons learned when building a standard hive are easily transferable to the job of building a mini nuke. There are four components of the standard hive that need to be modified for a mini nuke. The screen bottom board, the hive body, the frames, and the inner cover. Overall, a pretty easy job and we will show you how in just a minute. Most of the steps for building a mini nuke are the same as those for building a standard hive. So before we start, we suggest that you might want to review the videos we have on our YouTube channel for building a standard beehive. Today, we will focus on the differences and not spend a lot of time on those steps that are in common. Here we have set up a mini nuke so that we can look it over and get an idea of where we are going. Let's take a quick look at what we have. Let's start with the hive body. As we can see, it is simply a standard hive body box divided into four chambers. A partition divides that box into half lengthwise, and another partition runs the full length of the box, creating four separate spaces. Inside the mini nuke's hive body, we have the mini frame. A mini frame is essentially identical to a standard frame, except that it is only about half as long. The Mini Nuke's screened bottom board has the same footprint as the hive body. The bottom board is divided into four sections that match the four chambers of the hive body. The top of the front rail is even with the side rails so that there is no opening on the front and there are gated entrances on all four sides. The inner cover also has four dividers similar to the bottom board. A notch on each side provides for ventilation and an additional opening for the bees to come and go. And finally, four large round holes centered above each chamber are used to hold quart jars when feeding the bees. So there are the components of a cham four chambered mini nook. The bottom board which is divided into four sections. The hive body which is also divided into four chambers the mini frames which fit into the chambers and the inner cover which is also divided into four sections and features a ventilation notch and a feeding hole in each of the four sections. You probably have noticed that I am using a medium depth hive body for my mini nuke. This is what I use in my bee yard. However, I realize that many beekeepers will go with a deep box. The downloadable plans for this project will give the dimensions for both styles. Now let's get started. Let's start first with the mini nuke hive body. As we just saw, it is basically a standard hive body with two important differences. First, a set of partitions or walls divide the box into four sections or chambers. And second, an entrance hole is drilled in the side of each chamber 
and then covered by an entrance disc. I have here the unassembled parts of the hive body, which result from following steps 1 through 6 of the standard plans. Before we go further and assemble these parts, we need to pause and make the partitions that divide the box into four chambers and drill the entrance holes. Let's start first with the partitions. There are two partitions which divide the hive body into four chambers. One goes across the middle of the box and the other runs the length of the box. The partition that goes across the middle of the mini nuke needs a frame rest on both sides to hold the mini frames. So we have to build this partition with the frame rest in mind. On the other hand, the only job of the partition running lengthwise is this to separate the adjoining chambers. This partition is not structural and can be made from much thinner material. All of these partitions need to be the same height as the hive box and all of these partitions will slide into grooves which we will cut into all four sides of the hive body and into both sides of the middle partition. Because of the frame rest, the middle partition is the most involved. So let's make this one first. As we just saw, the middle partition needs a frame rest on both sides. Each frame rest is 3 eighths of an inch wide and 5 eighths of an inch high. The same dimensions as the frame rest on each end of the hive body. An easy way to make this middle partition is to laminate together three pieces of 3 eighths inch thick plywood. The middle section is 5 eighths of an inch higher than the two outside pieces, so that when the three plies come together, we end up with a 3 eighths inch wide and a 5 eighths inch high frame rest on both sides. The middle ply is also a quarter inch longer on both ends. This forms a tab which will slide into grooves that we will cut into the sides of the box. To make the middle partition, we will need three pieces cut from 3 8 inch plywood. The two outside pieces are 14 and 3 quarter inch long and 9 inches high for deeps and 6 inches high for mediums. The inside piece is 15 and a quarter inch long, which is a half inch longer than the two outer pieces and 9 and 5 8 inches high for deeps or 6 and 5 8 inches high for mediums. I have gone ahead and cut the three pieces of plywood to the sizes shown in the previous diagram. Now it is time for the glue up. If you are going to use nails or staples, then be sure to avoid putting any near the center line. We will soon cut a vertical dado in this area for the lengthwise partitions. And it is not good on the saw blade if we have to cut through any of those nails or staples. Let us deal with the partition that runs the length of the mini nuke. As we said previously, the only job of this partition is to separate the adjoining chambers. It doesn't have to support anything. So I am going to use 1 8 inch Luan, a type of thin plywood. We need two partitions, one for each side, that are 9 and 3 8 inches long and 9 and 5 8 inches high for a deep mini nuke, or 6 and 5 8 inches high for a medium mini nuke. These two partitions will slide into 3 8 inch deep vertical dados that we will cut into both ends of the hive box and on both sides of the middle partition we just made. Cutting small pieces from large sheets of plywood can be kind of awkward. I usually cut a piece a bit larger than I need and then use the table saw to get to the final size. There, the lengthwise partitions are done. As we saw before, the partitions we just made will slide into vertical grooves or dados cut in the middle of all four sides of the high body and the middle partition. All of these dados need to be cut before we assemble the mini nuke box. On the inside of the box, we need four dados centered on each side. The two dados on the long sides are 3 8 inch wide and a quarter inch deep. The two dados on the ends and both sides of the middle partition are 1 8 inch wide and 3 8 inch deep. Cutting these dados is a job for the table saw and a set of dado blades. I will cut the dados on the sideboards first. I've installed the dado blades stacked for a 3 8 inch wide cut and raised the blade to a quarter inch height. And before you make the cut, double check to make sure that the groove is exactly centered in the middle of the board. You can certainly measure to find the center line of the board, but here is a shop tip that will help you to exactly find the middle. First, position the fence as closely as you can by measuring with the ruler. 
Then slide the board up against the blade and take just a tiny nibble off the edge. All we need to know is the location of the dado we are about to cut. Then keeping the same side of the board down, turn off the saw and rotate the board and place it behind the blade and slide the tiny notch up against the blade. The blade should exactly match the location of the notch. If it doesn't, then move the fence half the distance that the blade is off. This technique will assure an exactly centered dado each and every time. The dado blade is now set for an eighth inch wide cut and I've raised the blade to three eighths of an inch. We can cut the dados on the end boards. Again, make sure these dados are exactly centered. And then complete the job by cutting the dados on both sides of the center partition. Note that these dados are 3 eighths of an inch deep and stop just up against the back of the frame rest. When we slide in the two lengthwise partitions, these partitions will butt up against the back of the frame rest with no gaps and be B tight. We might note that when you cut the dado on the ends of the high body, the dado will come through on the handhold, and when you install the partition, it will show through. If this bothers you, you can clean things up with a chisel or a utility knife. Although not really necessary, these plans call for an entrance hole near the bottom of each mini nuke chamber. Four entrances in total. I prefer to stagger these entrances so that there's only one per side of the hive body. This will help each colony find their own entrance. The entrance hole is covered by an entrance disc, a gadget that allows you to control how the entrance hole is used by the bees. I made these entrance discs on my 3D printer, though they are available for most bee supply catalogs. The hole should match the size and shape of the large opening on the entrance disc. In my case, that is one inch round. Locate each entrance hole a couple of inches from the end and about a half inch up from the bottom of each chamber. We can now complete the assembly of the mini nuke hive body. It is always a good idea to dry fit all of the pieces together one final time to make sure everything fits and all of the joints are tight. Once you are satisfied, go ahead and glue and nail all of the pieces together using clamps to hold things tight. There, that part of today's project is now done and ready to be painted. I use inspection covers when working with the mini nuke and find them to be really handy. The covers help keep the bees calm in the chambers you are not working on, although agitated bees in a mini nuke never seem to be a problem. The covers are simply four pieces of thin plywood, I use 1 8 inch Luan, cut to a size of 9 and 15 16 inches long and 8 and 1 8 inch wide. This is exactly a quarter of the size of the mini nuke's footprint. This job is about as simple as it gets, so I will leave the details to you. Next, we come to the mini frames. There is something about these mini frames that makes me realize just how small the mini nuke is. To me, holding one of these tiny frames is one of the charms of a mini nuke. I wonder if you will get the same feeling. Making a mini frame is exactly the same as making a full size frame with the only difference being the length of the top bar, the length of the tack strip, and the length of the bottom bar. For a standard frame, the length is 19 inches. For a mini nuke frame, the length is 9 and a quarter inches, a bit less than half. To make this shorter frame, Cut the length of the top bar to nine and a quarter inches. The bottom bar is eight inches long and the tack strip is seven and a quarter inches long. I have made the parts for the mini frames and went ahead and assembled one of them. But remember, you will need 20 frames for the mini nuke, maybe a few more. So go ahead and check out our video on making frames to see how to gear up and really crank a bunch of these puppies out at one time. We recommend standard wired wax foundation for the mini frames. A single 16 and 3 quarter inch wide sheet is cut vertically into three equal lengths. When installed in the mini frames, there will be a small gap between the size of the foundation and the sidebars of the mini frame. It is our experience that the beads will fill in this space when the foundation is drawn out, so don't worry about it. 
Regular foundation pins will not work to hold the foundation because of this gap. A good substitute can be had by using bobby pins, which are inexpensive and widely available. Transfer clips are used when moving the mini frames to standard equipment. The clips provide the support needed to hang the mini frames in the space that would otherwise be occupied by a standard frame. I use two sizes of hanging clips. One size is used for hanging two mini frames end to end, and the second size is wider and used to hang four mini frames. The clips can be made from light aluminum stock, the same material used when making a telescoping cover, or the entrance clips for the mini newts inner cover. So it pays to keep any scrap pieces of aluminum you might have from other projects. This graphic shows the sizes of both styles of clips. Start with a strip of aluminum, one inch wide and about six and a quarter inches long for the single clip, and about eight inches long for the double. Then using the hand seamer, start making the bends from the inside out as shown here. You might find the double clips a bit too flexible for your taste. You can stiffen up the clip by leaving the flange on either side of the bottom part, say a quarter inch or so, and then bending the flange 90 degrees over on each side. This will add considerable stiffness to the clip. And this brings us to the end of making the mini frames. It is time for a break. We will complete the mini nuke by building the screen bottom board and the inner cover when we return to the beekeeper's workshop. <laughs>